So we were getting to uh, to the bottom of George Harris. Beetle for uh, for a while. Yeah, I was um, very impressed okay. meeting a Beetle. Yeah. <laughs> Before I even knew him. What was it, 60, uh, 76 or 7? No, it was 73 or 4. That early? I was, before I even got to know him or anything, I was just very awestruck. You know, he didn't want to, you know, getting around it. Yeah, right. I mean, I said to Willie when we left Ronnie's house that night, <clears throat> we both got in the car to drive back to our hotel room. We just looked at each other and a big smile came up on our face because it was still at a time even when you know, the Beatles hadn't become as uh, integrated into society as they are now. Yeah, they, they were still a definite presence. They were, as years go on, they become more accessible to the public. Back then, uh, well, you know, it was, I thought, shit. Sugar chairs? <laughs> 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 yeah, that's much of a. Uh, I mean, that's. That's when that was all. You know, well, we played, and then he asked us if we wanted to come out to his house for a day. And we went out there and had the grand tour. It was an incredible. <laughs> incredible. <laughs> incredible. Well, it was an old monastery. It's been remodeled but, and decorated. I can't place them in. It's not way out in the country as you'd expect. It's, uh, it's it's right up the road from a town. The gates to his place are uh, just outside of this town. You know, you drive past his gates every day if you were there. Is that right? You can't see in or see anything. Yeah. You go right past the gates. He's got a studio in his house? Yeah, up on the top floor. That's your point of view? Mm -hmm. Every imaginable gadget, you know. Two Studer 24 tracks, two 16s, two 8s, two 4s, two, you know, all Studer, <laughs> all custom built stuff, you know, with the faders, has all that Indian stuff inscribed. Is that right? The buttons on the faders, they're all hand carved. <whistles> Hundreds of instruments, and all the windows are church glass, you know, paintings. Same glass. Yeah, stained glass, beautiful view of all the gardens and property as you're in the studio playing, you're looking out over all this property. Uh, it was when he and Patty were breaking up, which was a bit tense in the house. I mean, it was a very hard time for them both, I'm sure. Can you get help him pretty well? Yeah. Yeah, I got to know him. He, he liked to sit and talk. He liked to talk. He talked about the old days with the group a lot. Did he? What he like Nothing specific. Like he missed it, or? I don't know if he missed it. I think what came out of it was how insane the whole happening was. He used to say that they were just an excuse for the world to go crazy. <laughs> We were, you know, like... <laughs> That's a great line. We were this thing. Something had to come along if it was whoever. The world needed to explode at that moment. Or the kids, the mind, something had to happen. And they were where all the energy got directed. Mm -hmm. I mean, they had to sort of sit and laugh at how grossly out of proportion it all became. They were just another pop group that all of a sudden had all this importance placed on every word that came out of their mouth. Yeah, it really was out of totally out of And it was so distorted. Yeah. You know, the proportions of the whole thing, the money, the stealing, the, the press, you know, every move they made was being watched, you know. It, they were just another pop group. They didn't plan it that way or plan mm -hmm. to be, you know, leaders of a culture. Right. We put that responsibility on them. And to him, it seemed to be just about remembering these crazy times, you know, where nothing made any sense at all. 
and how out of proportion everything was. He's such an everyday, regular person. that, I mean, you can see how it was all distorted because he's just a simple guy from a working class background in England, you know, who just was hurtled into this thing. Yeah, it's hard, intellectually knowing that, <clears throat> on one hand, it's hard for me to put that together with my, I still don't see them as something I'm human. I mean, I don't know if it's human, but the legend thing just, so heavily, you know. Well, I, you know, I, it, after being around him, I, I really was able, after a while, to sort of um, take what was happening for what it was at that moment. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was able to put out of my head the how impressed I was, and that this is a beetle, and that did pass, and after enough days of being at his house all the time and working in the studio, yeah, we have to get it came down to just work and oh, let's get another track, and, you know. Yeah, you get over that. Fast. You can tear away all the glitter. Yeah, you know? you have to. And you can, in fact, with George, he was very unhappy. He was a mess at the time. You know, he's. Yeah, he's torn between this God thing and this drug thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, there was no integration, no balance. He it was almost like these two extremes lived in him. Mm -hmm. And he'd go off on one extreme, and then in order to save himself from death and annihilation, mm -hmm. from just being too out of it, he would bounce to the other extreme mm -hmm. to, to, to hang on to himself. Mm -hmm. There was that extreme in him. He was really unhappy at that time, his marriage breaking up. I mean, that's about all any of them could have had to get through that madness was their family, <coughs> the wife and the children. Mm -hmm. that, that's all you could have in your life that could have meaning and something to hold on to would be that one relationship with uh, that one person, you know? And that was going to fall into pieces for him. His marriage was breaking up, and so... Yeah. I think he's... Uh, I see him as unhappy. He was basically struggling just to cope, you know? He didn't... He didn't and couldn't live up to like this aura of being one of these four guys that you know was sent by God. You know, mm -hmm. it wasn't him. He, was he probably because he, he being a spiritual guy, he probably would think about that. Why? Why me? How come I'm put here to have all this? You know, to be a beetle. I guess. Yeah, I mean, he, I think he used to have a lot of guilt about all his possessions and all that. He, he would keep saying, what's all this that I have? Why me? And, and what does it all matter anyhow? He, he always had that ability to put in the material world. To say, well, what, you know, what does all this mean? I mean, uh, I'm going to be gone and, um, you know, he could transcend from all that. I think he was confused by it. Because basic, the basic him, none of that, the money and the fame wasn't helping him. Mm -hmm. It wasn't bringing him a richer life at all. Right. He was preventing almost, him to get to it. almost out of his death. Mm -hmm. Did that impress you at all when you would be talking about things like that? I mean, did that have caused you to put a, maybe a different perspective on your own goals or the, the idea of making it? Did you start to look inward with yourself and deal with the more spiritual side of yourself during that time? No. I mean, I just saw that, which I saw many times, I and mean, we Sly and a lot of pop stars, yeah. that the money often leads them into trouble. Mm -hmm. Could you figure out why? Like, why that happened? I don't know, too much, too quick. 
handed over so fast. Mm -hmm. And then where do you go? What, I mean, when you remove the motive of having to work for money out of your life, mm -hmm. you know, someone just gave us $10 million, and all of a sudden the motivation of money, survival, was taken away from us. I don't know where I'd end up, mm -hmm. or, you know, what I'd be doing. I sure. might be off on a boat somewhere, just, I don't know. In other words, you know, when that drive is taken away from you, if you didn't have to go to the, the, the magazine every day, then you're left with really confronting yourself. It's like, what am I going to do for the next 50 years? I don't have to work. Have you what am I about that? Like if time and money weren't an object in your life, would... would yeah, I good? saw that and wondered, God, I don't know if I want to be there, because mm -hmm. I don't know what I'd do. So much of, of, of what uh, dictates what I do in life mm -hmm. is because I, you know, have to work, because mm -hmm. you, you have to get money, and then because you have to work and you want vacation, so you, you strive for those things. You've got to work to live, and then you want time away. Mm -hmm. But it's all the struggle for survival that dictates so much of what I do, you know? Mm -hmm. I, I think I'd be lost. I mean, I don't know what I'd grasp onto or what I'd do. I mean, you just can't go on vacation year after year. I mean, that's the real, that would be a real contest for anyone, I think.